Hello Thinker Hanol. This is my response to the Chris Angel Debunk Psychics video. Very good piece. Um, I especially like the fact that Chris Angel has been taking the time to actually go out and, uh, much like other magicians, go out and debunk um, what professional psychics do as magician's tricks. However, I still think that there is a minor problem with using this argument, much like um, some have used it, that just because a magician can fake it does not uh, automatically means that not that not all yeah automatically means that all psychic phenomena doesn't exist. For example, uh, one of the guys down in the comments said it's uh, nice to see Chris Angel debunking it. It's all showbiz and tricks. There's no such thing as ESP. That may well be the case. However, that is not a logical statement to back that up. The reason I say this is because of the fact that there is a video. Uh, I've already done my uh, I've already done my video called uh, Skeptic Police, but uh, this uh, I'll reiterate again what happened in that one, uh, which basically I reduplicated a pen and teller trick where I actually lit up a fake cigarette and said, oh well since this is fake and I didn't really like this cigarette was an illusion, therefore all lighting of cigarettes and smoking of cigarettes must be an illusion, right? The answer to that is no, and if you stretch that by analogy, just because a magician can fake it, a magician can fake anything, therefore it does not it is not proof that the, uh, the thing that they are faking does not exist. Now, let me make myself perfectly clear here. I am a skeptic myself, well, still something of a skeptic, and an agnostic, and I do not repeat, do not believe that this stuff exists outright. However, what I do believe, however, is that we seriously need to rework on our arguments um, in terms of how we debunk parapsychology. For example, um, I talked to Thinker Ha a little while ago. Um, I talked to him about uh, my about the Penn and Teller Explained Sleight of Hand uh, video here on YouTube. Uh, that maybe um, they should go and read my comments on that about uh, again, you know, this magician stretch. And that where we probably should be really focusing our tactics on is using videos like Chris Angel debunks psychics to say this is how professional psychics fake it, so you can watch for this. Not so. Not a. Um, not a, you know, we can do it, therefore it's not real, because um, we also have um, some other issues coming up. Namely, what, we've, what we really should be doing is trying to debunk the scientific studies, um, what, uh, good or bad, that apparently give evidence for extrasensory perception's existence. Um, namely, such things like the Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research Labs, the Gansfield, some more obscure ones, which um, appear to actually pretty good, but don't ever really make the... Uh, don't ever really make the uh, the mainstream, like uh, telepathic transfer of emotional information in humans by uh, Dr. Howard Eisenberg. Um, but anyway, that's another kettle of fish, and um, I'm going to be dealing with that one in a separate in a separate video at another time. Um, as well as also dealing with the skeptic believer observer effect. The reason why I say that we really need to um, go at the scientific studies one at a time, and severely. Reform, reformat our arguments is because of some stuff that I've come across in issues of the Skeptical Inquirer, which apparently is giving support to parapsychologists and believers in parapsych phenomena. Uh, let's see for an example. Here we go. Under news and comment, um, there's this one uh, by Stanley Jeffers called Pair Lab Closes Ending Decades of Psychic Research. Um, this does a, uh, a, a like much of a just a, a general overview. Um, quite some good criticisms on Pear's work, and I'm actually glad for this. Uh, but then a but then a paragraph comes up here, which um, which actually says as follows: Two papers have been pub appeared in more mainstream journals, i.e., uh, sorry, the I the IEEE, which is the thing for electronic engineers, and the uh, back in 1992, and Foundations of Physics. The attitude of most of the academy has either been rejection without a close examination of the evidence or simple indifference. One notable exception uh, uh, offered to the pair group by, uh, um, uh, well, sorry, one, not uh, is this, uh, one notable exception is the support offered to the pair group by um, one Nobel laureate in physics, Brian Josephson. Uh, one waggish editor uh, did offer to pay, uh, publish a pair paper if it could be transmitted telepathically. The work of pair. Uh, of the pair group does raise larger concerns, um, uh, does raise larger issues for the academy concerning academic freedom. Princeton, to its credit, has recognized Jean's freedom to pursue a controversial area despite the obvious discomfort of some of the faculty, particularly in the physics department. The point is that this is would be um, going, this would be largely um, supporting some of these um, ad 
homonyms. I'm not sure if they're ad hominem or the fact that they or these constant uh, conspiracy theories by the uh, by the parapsych by parapsychologists that mainstream science is trying to suppress their science. Um, you know, if if we're publishing, uh, if you know, and remember the quote, this uh, this does raise larger concerns for academic freedom. If we're publishing as ske if skeptics are publishing this sort of crap. You know, if as skeptics are publishing this sort of stuff, which believers can use to twist, to, uh, which believers can then twist to support their own arguments. Uh, another example is in my video, a look into the psychic update, where and originally a look into the psychic, uh, sorry, the underwear magician special part two, where I covered the um, the article which apparently uh, gives support to the skeptic believer observer experimenter effect. Uh, you know, sorry, the skeptic believer experimenter effect. Then. Um, you know, if, if we're, if as skeptics we're publishing this, then we've got to be able to back ourselves up, you know, back the data up to have defenses against this, so this way, uh, you know, to further clarify what we mean, or etc., just to make sure that this way believers cannot twist the data and make it appear that uh, we're starting to lose, uh, that we're starting to get gaps in our arguments. Um, another example was that one which, uh, uh, you'll you find um, another video in mine down in there, which is called "Re I Am an Atheist," where I actually take the time to debunk another atheist. Um, or, well, I'm as an I'm an, an agnostic, but I take the time to debunk an atheist argument, who used the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics to explain the creation of the universe, which is in and of itself another superstition. And believers are already using to try to support their pseudo, uh, which are trying to use to support parapsychological phenomena. So. I cannot stress this enough, people. We really have to work on strengthening our arguments, getting through critical thinking. Um, thinker ha, I know you said that my uh, words are hollow. Well, um, again, I've got sources to back me up as to how as to how our skeptics are starting to uh, starting to slip. Um, if you really want some solid stuff, go through my other videos, every single one of them, and you'll find the um, and you'll find the data in there to um, hopefully the, uh, to see where hopefully we can start seriously. Tightening in our arguments and then being able to debunk um, psychics, uh, religion, etc., one step at a time, rather than just assuming. And the, note that uh, note that um, jumping to con and this is a critical thinking fallacy called jumping to conclusions um, uh, or hasty conclusion, you know, based on uh, insufficient evidence. That just because we are uh, just because uh, uh, we are sitting here and we have been rational before, uh, before uh, automatically assuming that all our arguments are rational just because of our belief. Not a smart move. That is, uh, it's much like, um, you know, if without actually examining our arguments, then we are no different than the religious people who just simply uh, sit there going, oh, God's on our side, therefore we're, you know, uh, we're religious, therefore we're rational, therefore, you know, we've got a better argument than anyone else. So, really be careful about that. We really need to work on uh, examining our own arguments just to see how strong we actually are, and then, re and then re strengthen our arguments where we're weak. That's all I'm saying, thinker ha. But actually, and please actually pay attention to what I'm saying about this, because chances are there's something there that we do need to work on. Okay? Thanks. Bye bye.